What's up everyone, welcome back. Today I thought I would share how I designed and built a chess set, including all of the pieces. I decided to take on this project when I thought back to when Kyle and I were in college, there was this little cafe by a creek side that had all these chess sets that you could take out to the back patio. We'd grab one, play a few games while we ate lunch. Those were really fond memories and I would love for us to be able to play again. So I thought this would be the perfect excuse to try and build a chess set myself. I started out with a sketch of the design. As I mentioned, I wanted to create a contemporary looking chess set where the pieces were easily recognizable, but they'd also be possible to do with the tools that I had access to. From the start, I knew I wanted to use walnut and maple as I think they have a beautiful contrast to each other. I was lucky enough to snag a piece of curly maple that I found at Home Depot, and I think these curls are really gonna pop when I put a finish on. Chessboards come in all sizes, but ultimately I decided to go with a board that would measure 16 inches by 16 inches. And since chessboards are eight squares across on all sides, that would mean each square would be about two inches by two inches. I used a miter saw to cut the boards of maple and walnut down a bit and left some buffer for the cuts, but as we'll see later, it wasn't enough buffer. I'm new to woodworking and so far I've never had to use a table saw, but this was the project to finally give it a go. To be honest, I've always had a healthy level of fear of and respect for the table saw, which has kept me from using it for a while. My dad, who has a lot of experience in woodworking, supervised me and jumped in to offer safety tips as I got started. He also put the shield over the blade, which does provide another barrier between you and the saw, but did create some visibility issues for me. A couple cuts into my first time using it, I had a scary moment when a thin sliver of wood wedged itself between the blade and the shield. I didn't see it lodged in the shield and so didn't clear it out before making my next cut. I debated even sharing this moment as people can be brutal when it comes to mistakes around table saws and with good reason, but on this channel I'm determined to show my mistakes not only to keep myself accountable and do better in the future, but also so others can hopefully avoid them. With all the pieces cut down to 2 inches, the next step was gluing those 2 inch strips up. I used some bench dogs and the bench vise to clamp them all together while they dried. Okay, so that's looking pretty good, but I'm just gonna put some heavy stuff on it to keep it from buckling. I also glued up and clamped two thinner strips of walnut and two thinner strips of maple together to make a longer piece that would eventually be cut down to make my individual chess pieces. And I let them both dry overnight. Unfortunately, the board was a little too wide for the planer in my parents' shop, so I had to get out the belt sander. Okay, so I thought this was just a dirt mark on the board, but it is not coming off even with lots of sanding. One of the strips of maple had what seemed to be some oil residue that wouldn't go away with sanding, so I had to just make sure that that part ended up on the underside of the final piece. I was lucky that only one little area had that oil on it.
Next, I went back to the table saw and squared off the board, then cross cut it into two inch strips in the other direction. To make the actual checkered pattern, I flipped every other strip the opposite direction. Using this method, the checkers across each strip lined up perfectly. At this point, I also realized I had made a huge mistake. As I started cross cutting the board, it quickly became apparent I had not accounted for how many cuts I would make to square off the pieces and create the two inch strips and how the one inch I had added to the width as a buffer was not enough to cover the amount of material that was lost with every cut. As you can see, that is not two inches, so we gotta figure something out. So I had to remake the last strip, which was far from ideal. Luckily, I had plenty of maple and walnut left to do this, but it was going to be very difficult to get an independently made strip to line up perfectly as the rest had. Don't be like me, account for that one eighth you'll lose on every cut, and then add a bit more buffer on top of that from the beginning. I personally know I will not be forgetting that for next time. Okay, nothing is glued up yet, but I just set it up to see how it's coming together and you can see all the rough cuts for the pieces. Once all the strips were ready to go, I glued them down on a one quarter inch piece of plywood. I plan to add a walnut trim around the entire board so you won't see this piece of plywood in the final product. I just sketched out um, on all these pieces and I think I'm gonna use the bandsaw to cut them. I decided that the chest pieces would be easiest to cut on the bandsaw and use some spare wood and small clamps to create a little setup that would help me cut the pieces while keeping my fingers clear of the blade. Next up, I did my final cuts on the board just to make sure everything was perfectly square. I tried to take off as little as possible. At this point, I also cut all the pieces for the walnut trim. I brought out the belt sander again to get the whole surface as even as possible before going in with some putty to fill in a couple small cracks in between the checker pieces. The putty color was a perfect match for the walnut wood. Since my design had the trim only partially covering the sides of the board, I did a quick pass with the random orbital sander around the sides 
just enough to get it to a nice finish without ruining the straight edge. Next up, I brought out the walnut pieces for the trim and marked where I'd be making 45 degree cuts. I brought out the miter saw again for this as it's the easiest way to make those 45 degree cuts I needed. As I cut the pieces, I kept checking to make sure that they were all fitting together perfectly around the board and ensure there wasn't any gapping in the corners or other fit issues. Before gluing it all together, I did a few passes with my random orbital sander over both the trim pieces and the top of the board, slowly working up to 220 grit. Once that was done, I used this really handy clamping device that I borrowed from my dad, which allows you to use a strap system with corner plastic pieces that you can add or remove tension to, to keep a piece with corners in place while it dries. I'd recommend setting it up first and then taking off just a bit of tension so that you can pull the pieces apart to lay down some glue. While the board dried, I spent lots and lots of time sanding down the chest pieces. This is my least favorite part of the entire project, but then again, sanding is just one of those necessary evils in woodworking. Although if sanding is the most irritating part of a project, then applying finish is easily the most satisfying. Wow, not gonna lie, that is looking really beautiful. Hey, I thought we were gonna play. I'm really happy with how everything came together. Obviously a few things went wrong along the way, but the final product looks so great. I'm really happy I was able to figure it out and I'm glad I took on this project. If you enjoyed this video, please like or comment below. It really helps out. And if you wanna see other videos like this one in the future, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.